Alan, you've been involved with e-learning for well over 20 years now and at the forefront. And I've always been fascinated by your comment about, you know, how do you start with online learning? You said it's as easy as E equals MC. What does <laughs> E mean? What does E mean? So E is, is really about engagement. Um, think of your, your best ever lecture, uh, and I know you do some fantastic ones, um, but the best ones are where people are really engaged. And that tends to mean you're not talking all the time. Um, you've got to get people involved. You've got to get people sharing ideas. You've got to get people doing things. If somebody's just sat in front in a lecture for an hour, it's dire. No offense. Mm. If they're You're online, right. then it's absolutely awful. So as an experience, you really have to think of it from um, the learner's point of view and think in terms of what, what are their needs. And they desperately will get so turned mm. off by an hour of, of watching a screen. It's got to be short. It's got to be snappy. It's got to be engaging. You've got to get people involved. Oh, cool. And um, so does that link into the M of e equals MC? <laughs> so the M really it is about that idea of, of, of motivation. Um, what's in it for me is, is, is central to that. Um, there's got to be something in it for, for, for people. And, and here we have a, a, an aspect of, of, of discussion point about extrinsic or intrinsic motivation. Mm. You know, where am I, why am I interested in doing this? Sometimes it is because you just got to, because you've got to get the grades, but the best comes from when it's actually intrinsic. It's actually worth doing it for its own sake. It's something that you're getting something out of because of you're just engaged with it. You're developing. You're thinking. You're you're exchanging ideas, um, and you get a, a your kicks from and your rewards from from the actual experience itself. So, I mean, students are diverse in a group. They all have slightly different interests and things that hook them. How does that then feed into the C of your E equals MC? Well, C is a, a slight variation, um, but. Um, Curation has always been an important aspect. You need some content to trigger that level of engagement. Uh, you need something to start them off. It's the it's the story you tell in in the lecture. It's some sort of little seed, some little kernel that starts things off. Now you could create content yourself. Uh, it you know done well. It, it could be fantastic. What we know is it will take absolutely ages. So my suggestion is always to, to mix it with a little bit of your own stuff with things that you can curate and, and you can find material all over the place. Um, I'm at the moment doing a, a, a piece of work coming up with uh, future skills curation. I'm curating 13 future skills um, for, for a learning pool, which is the company I'm working for. And um, I go about it by, by sort of thinking in terms of the, uh, the journals or the online places, which, are, which I respect. Um, you know, so the Harvards, the Forbes, the places like that. I then think in terms of the uh, uh, of the thought leaders, and some of them, you'll be astonished at the sort of the amount of podcasts that are out there, the amount of stuff on YouTube. There's this fabulous stuff. So I, I think of the, the the leaders, then cross check to see what their um, their output is like, and some of them have got some fantastic resources that are just there. And then I have to try and think in terms of diversity. From, from my point of view, I tend to err uh, to, uh, to, to the 90s and things that I remember from there. And I realize I'm so out of date. So I have to sort of force myself to, to actually look a bit deeper and think in terms of diversity, cognitive diversity, diversity of race and sex and everything else in terms of different views. So I get, a, I get a mix of curated content. So I think you have to kind of really force yourself to do that. But by going through that approach, you can identify some really good ideas, seeds that will, will, will spark that imagination. 
and and this can be done quickly and your expertise is not in creating the content but in curating the content and putting it in a way that actually means that your people will be engaged by it will have those ideas will get involved and and be motivated um, by it you know that's a really good point i guess that's what many faculty do anyway they choose the textbooks and the readings and they bring their own material and students discover their own content Alan, thank you for that. I think that's going to be a really helpful guide for those people setting out um, in these difficult times on trying to build uh, an online experience that's really going to enhance student learning. Thank you for your time on that.